Hello and welcome to another product from Roar3 Solutions. We have a, a kind of a long-awaited thing which is actually uh, unfortunate because it's been an obvious thing to come out for quite some time. It is the Lamborghini Aventador Roadster. So it's just a modification of the uh, one of my, my best-selling models, the Lamborghini Aventador. And uh, in this fashion it is uh, quite a model. As you can see, this is just the render running right now. Uh, it's actually gone through quite a few passes, uh, but if I bring it up, this model will be available to purchase through cgtrader.com. Uh, at the same time, it, you're, I highly encourage that if you are interested in purchasing the model, please buy it directly through my website at roar3dsolutions.com and you can just go into the store and look for the models that are available. It's in the process of uploading right now, so it's not here, but I will offer it at a special YouTube price of uh, $25 uh, if you purchase the model by looking at this video, which there will be a purchase code uh, within the, the description below. So very important if you're interested in uh, purchasing this model, this Aventador uh, Roadster, you can do so in the store on Roar3Solutions.com or if you do prefer to do, go through CG Trader, you're also welcome to do that because I offer all of my models on CG Trader underneath Roar3Solutions just the same. You can check out my page, check out my info. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time and I very much enjoy offering really high quality models to all of my uh, my patrons and my clients. So let's just kind of talk through what we got here. So first and foremost, uh, like most all of the models that I like to design, it is made almost completely entirely of quads. Uh, this will help the subdivision process. And as you can see, uh, as I mentioned, it's rigged in Cinema 4D and it's not a terribly complicated rig it's fairly simplified so that way you can uh, you can use it for most all applications uh, so uh, what exactly is rig so let's talk through that so first and foremost i'm going to take the uh, level detail in the editor and drop that down so it is not subdivided right now and it makes it much easier to navigate the screen this way so if i look at the model First thing I have is a high and a low, and this is a pretty normal thing that I do for most of the models that I create. So when you have a low level of detail, you kind of have a distant shot maybe of it uh, in the background, and uh, it will come up as a, you know, a, still a decent looking model. But if you don't want to give it a very high level of detail up close, then you don't want to leave the high detail enabled. When you go into the high detail, however, you will have all of the fancy features that I normally offer on all the models that, uh, that we do make. So, uh, so what you have here is your normal level detail in the editor. As always, I highly encourage that you leave it low. Uh, right now it's set for a minus one, which is a zero uh, level of detail, zero, and then it goes up to one, which uh, starts getting to be really busy. As you can see, a whole lot of polygons. So um, I recommend just leave it down to minus one unless you want to see uh, what a close-up shot of some of these components could be when it is uh, in a subdivision uh, mode. Otherwise, it's really not necessary. Uh, it is a fairly high polygonal model, so you know it's it's going to be very nicely subdivided when you're uh, actually using uh, any kind of level of subdivision. And as always, a level detail render of two or greater is always uh, best for uh, the renderer. Again, you can use a level of zero if you're using a, a low level of detail and you just have this as a background item for uh, either a game or a, uh, uh, a render you're trying to make and you just want it in the backdrop. So as always, I do like to also include uh, materials. So this does not apply to anything outside of Cinema 4D. Uh, only within Cinema 4D does the rig function. I have to be very clear about that. But within the rig, you can change colors on the fly and make, uh, you know, have several models with different colors, however you desire. And, uh, you know, adjust your specular. You can adjust your, your coloration, uh, your wheel color, 
Uh, you can make it as you desire. Same thing with the caliper color. I'm just going to go crazy here and go for a line. Uh, so coloration is going to be, uh, you know, is a normal, uh, uh, easy to adjust uh, mode. And, and the clear coat effect should give you still a really nice uh, um, specular, but it also includes a little bit of a flake. So as you kind of zoom in, uh, it's just a roughness in the clear coat. So you have this kind of nice, uh, natural looking polished effect that will make it look like it's an actual exotic car. So I uh, just want to throw that out there. I'm going to go back to the original colors because I feel like uh, this is kind of the color that I modeled the car after. And uh, it's kind of an attractive color. So what you have in terms of animations is you have window wipers that you can turn on and off. Uh, so simply turning them on does nothing until you hit your play line, your timeline. Once you hit the timeline, they will then activate and they will reset as the timeline resets. So this is also something to keep in mind whenever you're doing an animation and you want to shut them off. Make sure they finish the cycle of coming up and coming down before you disable the off. Uh, otherwise, it will, uh, it will actually look a little awkward. Um, you do have your normal turn of the wheels. Uh, and the steering wheel will rotate the same with it. That's pretty uh, normal and standard. Uh, you have your driver and passenger doors that will rotate, but I also want you to know I leave the windows in a, uh, kind of in a down position because it's a roadster. This is what we use it for, right? We want it to be cool and, and kind of topless. So, uh, But you do have windows. They do function. The doors do rotate along the correct axis, and there are jams, and the door panels themselves uh, Done the best I can to make sure they're fairly detailed along with the interior so uh, we'll get back to that in just a second though so the rear hatch it does have some items that are connected using the uh, um, uh, constraint the character constraint tools so uh, if you have any issues with these I do uh, did find a little problem a little bug that I wanted to throw out to everyone here uh, so as it stands right now, after several cycles, it does have a tendency, I'm going to disable the symmetry, it does have a tendency of walking. I'm trying to figure out how that's fixed. For the moment, it's a reset PSR that will give you the component back to the correct location. So if I just show you, so we'll go ahead and cycle this uh, a couple times. And as you see, the more times I cycle this, the more off that component becomes. So uh, I'm working on a, a, a patch for that, but for the moment, if you're doing uh, just a quick cycle on it, uh, all you have to do is PSR uh, reset and it will come back into play. Okay, so you also have your normal engine light within the rig. Uh, you have the ability to turn interior lights on, but here, let's just, just to show you. So you, if you don't activate the lights in general, uh, it's, it's fairly dark when you take a quick look at the engine bay. And then as you increase, sorry, the engine lighting, uh, you'll have kind of a nice brilliant light pattern that'll illuminate. So if you're doing a demonstration to show off the interior of, of the engine for any reason, you can actually really amplify that. Uh, it will slow down your render time, so, so just be aware of that. Headlights, as always, so headlights do two things. It will enable the headlight for the front and for the interior. So there are luminance channels. So if I turn the headlights on here, you can see that you'll get an illumination of the actual uh, uh, steering column and on the uh, display along with all of the Loomis channels uh, that go with the uh, the lights on the radio uh, and uh, and all of the buttons that are backlit. So those will all illuminate whenever you're using the uh, headlight on. And then we'll just go to the front of the car real quick and you can see that your headlights will activate and deactivate along with the LED strips uh, and individual LEDs on the uh, the blinker side also will illuminate uh, another important note everyone likes uh, they love their lights so I, I i have a problem sometimes where people complain the lights don't work well they only work 
uh, for certain things when the timeline is activated. So the blinkers will only function when you have it selected and you've enabled the timeline. Otherwise, the blinker will not function. So if I stop right here and then take a quick look, you'll see the blinker is actually illuminated and gives you even a little bit of lighting onto the tire and the wheel. Um, that is intentional, that it does blink as a natural light does. Uh, and once you disable it and turn it off, that light then goes back to a normal uh, glass appeal and you'll lose any kind of reflections that it has otherwise. So that's about it for right now. If I come back in and I can turn the lights back off. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, there is one more thing I forgot to mention, the uh, spoiler. So you do have a spoiler that will function. Uh, it kind of has just a slight rise and, and descent. Um, but it gives you kind of a you know the option of being a little bit sportier and compared to the normal aventador you do have these kind of cool uh side scoops uh, along the engine bay they are a little bit larger a little bit sexier than the original uh, aventador that i had made uh, so that in itself is about it additionally when we turn the headlights on you will have an illuminance channel for the rear and uh same thing when you turn on the uh the uh, signal you'll get an actual light that will blink with the blinkers in the back as well as have your uh, your lights on the license plate which feel free to change the license plate as I, of course I put uh, my company logo you obviously can put your own logo or any other uh, license plate that you see fit so that is the down and dirty of the Lamborghini Aventador Roadster so first off, I hope you guys really enjoy this product. It's uh, it's going to be fun for any of those that uh, first off like the Aventador and uh, want to be able to tinker around with a, um, a Roadster. So thanks for watching. As always, happy mopping.